115 emails to click through. Let's, let's squad bonus. Okay, we paid sixteen thousand. Uh, Parvaliga roundup looks like we finished tenth all told. Okay, not ninth. Ilyev scooped the first league goal season uh, goal scoring award. Uh, twenty goals and twenty eight appearances. Now remember, he had like twenty and twenty one, which means he went the last seven games when it mattered without a single goal. Um, and six assists, but he played very well for us, all told. We don't care about Nietzschev. We don't care about Glabovev. Um, we signed a new assistant coach. Borovic completed the coaching qualification that we didn't send him on. Um, we signed a sports scientist. We signed a head coach. Into season awards. Uh, Ilyev, player of the season, that makes sense. Uh, Coco was second. Uh, and Orichev, uh, goal of the season. Nikolai Herstov, our young player of the season. I will go with that. Um, contracts are about to expire. <clears throat> Did we do okay? I uh, made a profit of 826000 Um so I think we did fine. I think that was a good season fiscally for us. We do have to pay the taxes on that. Uh, over the past year being 522. We made a profit of 826,000. We paid taxes based on a profit of 522. Okay. Uh, everything's up except broadcast revenues, oddly enough, went down. Well, that's fine because we didn't, we didn't play Europe. We didn't, you know, well, we did play Europe the beginning of the season, right? We did start out with that. You would have thought our broadcast revenues were up. Um, okay. That's fine. New scouting budget. Don't care. Uh, data analyst, injury, uh, youth development. Okay. I guess they're just telling us that there's a job opening. Squad dynamics. Let's take a look at that real quick. We ended up good. We ended up with very good leadership support. Locker room atmosphere was a bit down. Um, wide range of ages. Uh, only one player that can be considered to be very happy, but only one unhappy player. Um, so that's not too bad. So I think we did fine there. Um, but again, you know, is what that is. Uh, click through, click through. How close are we? 77. We're halfway through. Um, Adansky staying on as general manager. Uh, we got a fitness coach, more coaches. Uh, Borisov. Okay. Some getting rid of some of the, the riffraff here. That's fine. Petrov leaves his agent, who's also named Petrov. Lazarov, one of our young strikers, signed a deal. Uh, not seeing anything too exciting here so far. Lots of clicking. Free transfer. Okay. Lots of injuries. That was a tough. That was a tough day of training, huh? Look at that. Three people out for four to five weeks, all on the same day. My oh, gosh. Um, I had a fight with Melo, or I had a fight with Nichev. Okay. Uh, man. More injuries, one to two days that time. We're getting there, guys. Uh, I still haven't seen like reward money or anything. Have you guys? That might be here on the last day. Itov, that's good. Um, we signed a fullback. Looks pretty good. We need fullbacks that hopefully play better than the fullbacks we had, so that's good. He looks very good, actually. Look at that. Spectacular, except for... Well, decisions is a little bit low, but... He looks pretty, pretty, and he's resolute. I, I think that's a, that's a good, well, we're not going to play through, but we'll, we'll click it anyway. Um, 
another injury. Made an offer for Yordanov. Uh, okay. Some of our troublemakers gone, finally. Youth players promoted. Okay. Uh, Parva Liga. We got 117,000 for TV rights. I still haven't seen what we're going to get. What we got. Did we see it? Maybe was it already 100,000? I don't remember. Uh, we'll just confirm that. Social, social, social. Hit one more. Let's get up to the, let's get up to the first. So that's the end of our season right there. Um, show yourself. Levski. How far down are we? Apparently, I can't show myself. Everybody's doing it with Levski and uh, Sophia, though. There's a Ludigrette. So I'm a little bit surprised we haven't seen more Ludigrettes. Okay. There we go. There's the Ludigrettes contingent. A Botov Plovdiv. Cherno. Okay. Simeon Mechev. Good job. You, you didn't take the easy way out. Uh, Maritza, well, that's that's lower league. Uh, a prostitute played Levski, okay. Dunav, now we're beginning to see like just not the top teams. You know what I'm saying? And um, there's still some Levskis, there's still some CSK Sofias. Transmariska, Tuchikon, okay. Haven't seen any Montana yet. We're we're about halfway through the list there. Clearly, we didn't set the world alight here. Vreya, Etar. More Ludigrets. We're not on, we're not on the list. <laughs> There's 304, but we're not in those 304. Does it tell us what our score is? It, when I click show myself, it puts me here. So I don't. I'm 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 not here clearly. Let's here. If we click here and go show myself, does it take me back to first? I don't know. I don't know how many points I got. It doesn't tell me my points, and it doesn't show me. So I, I beats me. I'm um, single season in division. That's what we're looking at. Single game, single season, single season in nation. Eighteen. Show myself. Again, apparently I'm in the top twenty, but I don't actually show up, so I don't know. That's clearly another bug. As long as we're finding those bugs, though, we may as well keep finding them. Nitchev hates us. He's always upset. He always wants to play more, and yet somehow he's staying. Just to continue to cause trouble for us in the future. Uh, we released five players. Are they more troublemakers? Um, Galen is one that's complained a little bit about, and eh, not really a troublemaker, but just hard to keep him his, his get him his time. Lots of contracts set to expire. Itov's injured. Somebody we've never heard of is injured. I'm just trying to get to the first tier training report. We're on the first, and that's that. So I think we've talked enough. Um, we don't care about Mihov right now. What does he want? I wonder why he wants to leave. Let's let's talk to him about it. Um, his contract just ended. Huh. Um, it won't be that. That's the wrong thing always to say.
it wasn't a mistake. Um, he he just wasn't good enough to play at this level. I mean, that's 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 really the deal. And they didn't give us that option, which they should have, um, because that's the that's the reality of it. The rest of that was none of those were relevant in any way, shape, or form to what actually happened, um, which is a little bit annoying. Um, it would be nice if it actually gave me options that were about this. You know, I mean, there's enough. It comes back. Well, let's 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 go into final thoughts here because this is going to tie into my final thoughts. One of those is that we ran into a number of bugs within their conversation tree, and those bugs just continue to snowball and snowball and snowball. Because um, locker room, um, because the dynamics here is is balanced so strongly at the moment that much of the game hinges on that. So when you have bugs that affect that that either make that worse or take away your tools to correct some of those issues, um, it makes it very, very difficult. And in this case, we saw that their conversation trees are horribly borked. They do not lead to where they should lead when you have the conversations. You're not always even given the conversation to have. Sometimes it just assumes that you had it and it went badly. Um, and we saw what, like four in 10 days, um, all exactly the same. Uh, a player who dropped their request, who we did not have the conversation with, right? And yet somehow we didn't get the conversation and they become unhappy, which then led to poor locker room atmosphere complaints on top of that. So it continues to go on and on. And this is, again, part of that problem. This isn't so much a quality control in that the conversation forks didn't go where they were supposed to go. It was a conversation problem where none of the options we had were really relevant to the situation at hand. Three or four of those were about us taking a big offer for him. We didn't get any money on him. His contract expired and he left. They weren't relevant at all. There should be a checklist for that. How did he leave? Did he leave because we got a big because we got an offer in and we sold him? Or did he leave because his contract expired? That seems to be a pretty easy check to build into that conversation, into that game, to give us a relevant list. Now, I understand sometimes that's going to give us fewer options, but those options would be relevant to the situation at hand, and that's better. Um, it, there's nothing more frustrating than having to deal with an issue like this that's going to, again, feed back into our dynamics, and you're not given a single option that's relevant to the situation at hand. So while this isn't specifically a bug, it's a design issue that I won't say it breaks the game, but it, it guarantees that you do not have the tools necessary to deal with the situation at hand because your options are so clearly wrong for everything. So they really, really need to go back in and look at A, the quality. They need to, they need to actually debug their conversation trees because they clearly have not done that to this point. Um, not even a little bit. It doesn't even look like they've glanced at it, as far as I can tell. They're so, so bad at this point. Um, but on top of that, they need to look through design standards a little bit on this and make sure that those conversations and those questions that are there are relevant to what the actual situation is. So I would say they need to go back and do a whole pass back through their conversations um, between the coach and the players. Um, I, I would say that needs to happen. Uh, it's not game breaking per se. Um, especially if you have, you know, this and you can kind of, you can break the game yourself to kind of readdress the balance, but I shouldn't have to cheat. I shouldn't have to pay an additional tool to make up for the bugs that are in the game. So a little bit frustrating about that. Um, I did really like playing just the one league. The game plays much quicker that way, and it doesn't have to be a GM challenge. It could be, you know, a, a zero to hero like Lelujo's non-league to legend type of series where you're taking a low league team and you're trying to get them to the top level or however you go. Any type of playthrough that, that, that just puts you in one league, the game is so much easier to go from match to match. There were times when we didn't cut away. We just clicked next and we're able to get to the game in a reason to the next game in a reasonable amount of time. We can't do that on a journeyman save. Um, you know, we get through an entire week and about the time it takes us to go through one day uh, when we have all the leagues loaded up in the journeyman. And we're still not crazy at this point. I think on our journeyman right now, this is this is recorded before Christmas to give you an idea how far in advance I, 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 ran, I ran this. 
Um, within the journeyman before Christmas, we have about 84,000 players added in the database at that time. If we look here, I've only got 12,000 in and we're running at 5,000. So um, it really does make a difference. So I really do enjoy running these single league um, or at least single country um, saves much, much more. Um, it goes much faster. Uh, thoughts on the GM challenge? Um, I enjoyed it. Um, like I say, most of our real issues came from bugs or dealing with the dynamics. Um, but that's okay. Uh, they didn't really affect the GM challenge portion of it so much. Uh, he gave us decent players, not necessarily always the direction I would have gone in. I would like some sort of way to communicate more with the GM to say, this is the type of team I would like. I'm looking for, for instance, I think it's under scouting. If we go to scouting and we go to assignments, maybe? Where is it? General general focus. We can come here. I'd like to be able to give my general manager a general focus. So I can say, look, I would like to play a technical team. Can you find me technical players? I would like to play an intelligent team. Could you find me intelligent players? Um, you know, that's the type of stuff I'm looking for. Uh, and have him, give him a little guidance towards the type of team you would like to play. Now, he doesn't necessarily have to do that. He could come back and do the opposite. Maybe we have a really strong willed. Maybe that comes back to this. Maybe that comes back to our personal stats, right? Our profile. It comes back to our determination maybe, right, as a stat. And what's his determination? And if our determination is up, he'll go towards the direction we want. If his determination is higher, then maybe he's going to say, no, no, no. I don't want to run an attacking team. I want to run a defensive team that's all about positioning and strength, you know, or whatever it may be. And the, it plays off general manager versus coach as far as our stats go. I think that would be excellent. I would love to see something like that in the game. Maybe next year they can build they can build that in where where we can have some more interaction with that general manager on how the team, which direction the team goes. That would be spectacular. Love to do that. Um, apparently, I rarely communicate directly with my players, despite the fact that I, well, I do let the captains do a lot of that, but I communicate fairly often. I think this is broke too. Um, it's funny because when when the assistant manager says something in a press interview about the other coach. It always comes back to, Mello said this about the coach last time, or, you know, uh, it always goes back to me. I didn't say it. Um, and the same thing, if the general manager has a conversation with the player and it goes badly, it's they had a fight with me, not they had a fight with Mandinsky or whoever your general manager is. And yet, somehow I don't get credit proper. I don't get I don't get positive credit. I only get negative credit for things that those say. If it goes badly, it's my fault. If it goes well, I rarely communicate directly with my players and I'm failing to make a positive impact or whatever the, the comment may be. Um, again, that's probably not a bug. I wouldn't say it's working as intended. I would say they didn't think about it at all. So there is no intended would be my guess. Um, as far as that goes. But anyway, that, that's my thoughts on the general manager. But I had a good time. He didn't give us necessarily the players I would have gone for. So we had to think a little bit more but tactically about what type of strategy we wanted to run, what type of tactics we wanted based on players that we didn't really have any control over getting. So if, if you're somebody that really likes the tactics and the strategy of this game and really likes having to come up with that sort of stuff, I would say try general manager. Let them control your personnel for you. Um, because then you're going to have to think on the fly and adjust your abilities to that. I always hate it when in professional sports and in real life, when we get this coach in and we say, well, he didn't have the players for his system. If he's a good coach, his system should be modified for the players he has, right? If he, if he can't do that, then he's not a good coach or a manager. He may be a good tactician. He may have thought of a really good tactic, but he's not a good head coach if he can't adapt what he's doing to the players he has, because that's that's ultimately what your job is as a head coach, is to deal with the players you have and put them in the positions to do well within a system. And if that requires changing the system, then that's what you need to do. Um, you can then go back, you know, through free agency or drafts or however your league or sport works, try to get the players that work a little bit better for what you'd like to run in the future. But in the meantime, you should be able to take the players you have and go on. So um, I think this general manager really rewards that type of gameplay. If you're good at that, if you like that, if that's the puzzle that you play to think your way through, um, then definitely try the GM challenge. I think it was 
all in all, I, I did some bitching here at the end about the players we have. Um, but I did enjoy the challenge, even if I didn't always enjoy watching the game afterwards. So take take some of the bitching with a grain of salt. Um, I played through all of this before Christmas and enjoyed every minute of it. I really, really, truly did. So the fact that I'm two weeks ahead recorded on this, um, that tells you how much I enjoyed playing it. So um, I did have a good time. It was a lot of fun. I do highly recommend this style. Um, some of these bugs that we had, for instance, the fact that we did not have a um, a board expectation, uh, I believe that comes because we started our save and we got stuck with that bug. And even though in theory it's fixed, uh, I haven't started any real saves that have gone far enough to find out for sure. Um we got stuck with that. So I think some of the problems we've had towards the end have been already have already been addressed. Um, in this case, it specifically said it was. In other cases, maybe they fall into just general fixes that we didn't get a specific call out in the deal. So um, some of these bugs take with a grain of salt. If I were to start a save today, we might not have seen quite as much of this as we have. Um, it's hard to tell. Uh, but But it is what it is. I would like to look at our players really fast here at the end and see what we have. Let's... Let's just clear everybody out of here real fast. And let's look at, let's look at, I built this for my Nigeria save. Let's come down here and look at mental. And let's let's get some work, let's get some ideas of what we got going on. First of all, I've been complaining about work rate on the team, and I don't really think teamwork's an issue. And I don't see it here. Uh, I mean, we see some players that weren't starting. Sergey isn't, oh, okay, we've seen Sergey kind of ignore directions and do what he wants. But realistically, we haven't, these players are supposed to be good at that. You know, I mean, almost everybody here is in the green for this, right? They're all all 11 or above for the most part. So the fact that we've seen in the last few weeks, months of this game, players completely ignoring all the tactical directions seems a little bit odd. Um, because the number here says that's not the case it should be. So that's interesting. Let's look at pressure. Was pressure, was the pressure stat what was affecting our games, and it doesn't appear to be. It looks like we have players that can deal with the pressure. Um, Yavchev, who's played well for us all season, is the lowest for that. So it doesn't appear that's an issue. Professionalism appears to be pretty good. We do have a fairly wide range, which may be part of the reason that we're having some locker room problems, right? We go from 16 to 10. Probably be better between 12 and 16. Um, you know, I mean, obviously the closer this is, the better it's going to be and temperament the same way. Uh, we've got 16 to seven here and we've got a pretty good split of guys that are 10 and under and guys that are 11 and up. And that's going to give you a divided locker room to have these temperaments split, um, which is going to cause problems in the end. It's going to give you two big groups, which is, I believe what we saw, right? We saw two in our hierarchy, uh, social groups. You know, I don't know if specifically if this is the temperament that, that gives it to us this or not. But this is what you expect to see with that type of range of numbers. So um, interesting. So you would like to keep these temperaments. So if you are playing with the hidden stats and you're looking at those, try to keep your temperaments and your professionals fairly close. I, I think obviously you're better off looking at resolution, resolute players who should have a good professionalism, be good under pressure and good determination. I think that's the type of thing that goes into that type of personality type. Um, clearly, I, I believe is the best. Um, and then you also have professional and semi-professional or, you know, type of stuff down to carefree and, you know, doesn't really care. So anyway, so that's that. Let's look at imported matches. We're not terrible there. Um, again, these are Coco. Well, we saw Coco disappear in some big matches. Um, Yavchev, we didn't really see that, I didn't believe. Borovic, yeah, probably I would say we saw that. Kristoff supposedly came alive in those. Nitchev, we never saw Nitchev play well. I don't care what these numbers say. Nitchev never really did much for us, despite the determination, the bravery, the important matches, the professionalism. We never really got anything out of Nitchev, except complaints that he wasn't starting as much. Um, but look at this, our, our goalkeeper um, played very well. Um, you can see his mentals are very good. So um, interesting. Um, let's look at overall ability, current ability. Kristoff, best player on the team uh, by a lot, as it turns out. We didn't see that spectacular performance from him, to be honest. Um, but whereas most of our team is essentially 85 to 100-ish, 
Um, you know, we've got a 101 and a 105. Oh, this was the guy we just brought in, right? Yeah, this is that defender they just brought in. So that's nice. Where are our other, let's look at some of our other defenders. Um, Mihov, Kolev, 88. Ahmed, 87. Nitchev, 86. Um, Caesar. Insert position. Orachev, 90. Uh, Minkov, an 88. So that's a big step up for us. Um, that's a really good player he brought in. So bringing in 100 players and, you know, hundreds and up is good. Um, let's look at, uh, let's look at our worst players. 55 for Caesar. We knew we weren't going to play him. And he's he's maxed out. He's where he's going to get. Silvov, okay. Um, Veslav, Lazarov. You know, he's kind of our player of the future, but he doesn't really have a lot of potential. He's pretty much where he is. And Borislav is the other striker that we were kind of hanging our hats on. He has a potential of 101. He's already 79. So he could clearly get to this range, but he's never going to be spectacular. Uh, Yavchev, oddly enough, 81 has you know, been one of our better players, but he's, he's got a potential of 100. We're not going to get there. We don't have the coaches. We don't have the training facilities to get most of these players to there. Borovic, uh, 125. How old is he? He's 35, though. So he clearly was never going to get there. He's he's done. He's he's already on the downhill slide. He never got anywhere near his potential. Um, Nichev. Ahmed has some potential. Is he young enough to maybe 24? Potentially we could climb a little bit more, but I would guess he's probably pretty close to done at this point. 108 for Georgiev. Again, let's see, age-wise, 28, yep, downhill slide. He's never going to get there. Coco, 28, downhill. He's None of these players are going to get there. You know, they didn't get far off. Ilyev has a 90. Um, played well for us, really did. Um, but at 25, he's unlikely to improve much more. So, uh, interesting. Uh, Hristov is, is going to be the star. And uh, at 20 years old... He's got a legitimate chance of hitting that ability, but there's already bids in on him um, from Arsenal. $2 million. If our general manager is smart, he takes that $2 million reinvested into the team. Um, because, like I say, $2 million for us with our finances, that's a pretty big deal, right? You know, I mean, that we've got six, seven eighty two in the bank right now. That's a lot of money. We don't really have any debt, so it's all positive at that point. That's interesting. Uh, so... It'd be good if he were to take advantage of that. Uh, so that's that's kind of the current and potential abilities. Uh, injury. Let's take a look at injuries. Uh, we can go look at hidden again. Where's injury prone? Right here. Uh, we're not a very injury prone team. Everybody's actually really good. Our general manager did an excellent job of that. And yet, <laughs> let's take a look at medical. Uh, let's see how we did for that. Uh, season summary. Uh, we had a lot of small injuries, but look at that. Uh, well, can we look at last season? No, we are unable to look at last season. That's, I guess that falls under history. Uh, this is 21. So let's come back here. Okay, here we go. These were our injuries. Uh, so we had the... Total this season. So last season, whoops, come on, go away. I don't need that to pop up. Uh, oh, wait, so this is this season so far. Last season, this was us. Uh, it'd be nice if it, so league average is three. We have four right now, two major, a minor, and a slight. Um, but you can see at one point here, we had eight. You know, we, we ran injuries all season. So most injuries in Parva Liga, six. This, oh, this is for this season here. Again, we're on history. It would be nice if it shows me history, not not locks in all these top things into this year. Um, but you can see four weeks, four weeks, four weeks, two weeks. Um, can we look at number of injuries per player? No. Can't do any of that on this screen. Uh, I guess we could sort by name, and that would let us know. So one, two, three, four, five. So six injuries for, for ITOP, all minor to slight, one moderate, one um, Georgiev had a number of them. Hristov had a number of slight. 
They were always the day before a game, too. It was always out for three days, but there'll be a game that day. Um, Sergey had two major. He had a tough season. He missed eight weeks, all told, um, despite not obviously having a serious injury. So um, not, not bad, I would say, overall. Uh, frustrating injuries. Um, but, you know, for Sergey to have, let's keep going back here. Let's see, he's only got an injury prone of eight, and he missed, like I say, he had two major injuries. So some of that's luck of the draw, but it is what it is. So I think we'll round it up here. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to know if we take that bid from uh, Arsenal. That's what I'm interested in. Now I really want to know. I don't really want to play another season. Uh, I just want to know if we take the bid from Arsenal. Let's go ahead really fast. I'm going to I'm going to vacation. Let's Let's check the calendar here really fast. Let's go. I know this is going long, guys. I'm sorry. I appreciate it if you stick with me to the end here. So when does the transfer window close? It closes September 7th. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to go vacation till December 7th and see what happens. So we're going to go... Um, hmm, I don't have control over any of that. So I don't think this matters. I'll just say that. Um... We don't care what tactics he used. We don't care what team selection he's at. He can use whatever he wants. We're not going to apply for anything. And we're going to come back. What day did we say? September? I don't remember what the day was. Let's let's go September 10th. I'll be back in just a second. Team anyway. So that's fine. Players that they brought in. They brought in Angel Lyaskov from CSK Sofia for 105000 So he did splash and potentially 135. He, he splashed out some cash on him. And he was that left defender that we looked at that's going to be very good. 22 years old is all. He's going to be excellent. Very good quality player. And then, oh, look at that. We, we just raided them, right? They got demoted, relegated, and we just cleaned house. We went in and bought everybody we wanted. Stanislav Kostov. Striker center, great finishing, 15. That's nice. Not a target man, right? He doesn't have he doesn't have good jumping. Um, flair, composure, off the ball. He's going to score some goals for him. That he is. Um, excellent. 65,000 for Todar here. Uh, midfield, attacking midfield. Okay, not quite to the same quality that we've been bringing in, but good mentals. Um, like to see that. Physicals are eh. But, you know, technicals are okay. Uh, he's he's filling at this point. I would say he's a sub. Um, attacking midfielder right. I, I don't know why he keeps... He loves his, his attacking wingers, right? Um, good acceleration. Good agility. Does he have the dribbling to go along with it? Yeah, kind of. Um, and some flair and determination. Off the ball is pretty good. He might be okay. Maybe he's a starter. It's hard to tell how that's going to work out. Yanko Angelov. Where did he come from? Also from Piran. Uh, decent crossing. Defensive midfielder, center midfielder. Physicals aren't spectacular. Mentals are okay. Mostly green, nothing super high. And technicals are okay. Again, role player, I would say. Defensive center. He's only 20 years old. He's very brave. Um, physicals are pretty decent. Strength is bad for defensive center. That really needs to be better. But he's got good teamwork. Determination's weak. Uh, this is a substandard. And his technicals, they're not bad. He's 20 years old. They're going to get better. Um, we'll have to, we'll check, we'll check potential and stuff. Um, this guy, much better. This is a an excellent. 20 years old, 13, 15, 12 for the technicals with a jumping reach of 12 already. He's 6'2". That's going to go up with strength of 11. Um, natural fitness is 17, so he's he's going to play hard. Um, he's aggressive, but he makes good decisions, good determination, good work rate. That's Ninov is an instant starter for this team. So if we come back and we take a look at our roster now, let's sort by let's sort by current ability here again. So now we've got four players over 100. Angel Lyskov, Petkov, Kostov, and Itov, and Nedelchev. Nedelchev's up to 100. Um, we've done, I guess, well getting him there. Again, he's got some pro, and I don't know what the problems are because I don't see them. His technicals are great. His decisions are good. His determination, everything's good. His teamwork is poor. Um, but he should have been better than he was, especially at only 20 years old. So if they if they put 
the two defensive back there is was Ninov the other one? Who is the other one? Yeah, if they go with Ninov and Nedelchev, in theory, they've got a spectacular defensive pairing. And you've got Itov as well, who could jump in there. He can play a number of positions for you. So that's really, really good. And then Kostov, they think is that is that our striker? That's our striker. Excellent. You put him in at striker. You got Petkov on the left, or maybe you run him attacking midfielder if you don't like wingers. Um, he's going to be very good. And then Angel's that defensive left back there. So they've got a very good core here going forward. There's still some potential left out of that group, especially with Pavel here. He could become much better. And Lyskov. Oh, and Petkov for that matter. Um, you know, this group is probably close to what it's going to get to. This group is spectacular. We've got some more potential down here. Um, is it people that are going to get there? We saw Petkov. We saw Lyskov. Um, he's not going to get there. Ninov we saw. Borovic's not going to get there. Okay, so not really worth looking at potential too much, although potentially they could get a lot of money for Petkov or Angel here in the future. So anyway, that's what the assistant manager do with that money. I wish he would have spent a little bit more of it, but, you know, he's slow and cautious. As long as we stay at the top, that money will continue to accrue, and maybe at some point they'll be in a position where they can buy big, big, bigger and bigger teams. We'll have to see. Well, we're not going to see. That's it. So thanks for watching, guys. I know this was a really long episode. Oh, it's so long. It's wore me out. Oh, all right, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having, having you for this one. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.